A lot of people think because they slip and fall in a public place that they've got a lawsuit. That's not true. There are many things that a person who's been injured in a slip and fall have to prove in order to have liability on a slip and fall case. First of all, you've got to prove that the slippery substance or hazardous condition that you slipped on was caused by the store. There was some sort of control and dominion issue. The store or place, of, uh, place where you were had control over that hazardous uh, substance. Second is notice. Um, if they had a hand in having that uh, become a hazardous condition, uh, did they have notice of that? And uh, also, the other thing you have to look out for is what was it that you slipped on? What was it that you fell on? Uh, meaning, was it easily seen? Uh, the case law says in California, was it open and obvious? So there's three hurdles. It's not like a car accident where there's a rear ender and it's clear liability. You have three hurdles. And the thing that's tricky about these cases is that is always open to attack. So you can have a good foundation of liability with the adjuster for some reason you file a lawsuit because you have to, then the defense attorney takes a totally different look on that and starts putting defenses on notice uh, and the type of uh, hazard that the client fell on. So it's a trick. That's why a lot of lawyers shy away from slip and falls because it is challenging uh, to, to establish that liability and going confidently uh, in trial with one.